Robots took my podcast, man. Okay, well, three, two, one, live from the La Quinta Inn in Tucumcari, New Mexico. It's the Robots Took My Podcast 50th Anniversary. I am Jordan, doing a bad impression of Shadow Stevens because we could not afford an announcer. Welcome, everyone. All right. Welcome. I am Jordan. Welcome to the Robots Took My Podcast 50th Anniversary Special. I am Jordan. And and I am Anthony. Uh, Jordan, it's, it's our 50th episode special not anniversary uh we have we have a cavalcade of stars joining us here in beautiful Tucumcari, new mexico in the lock heats and tumbleweed room thank you thank you to everybody uh the staff here has been fantastic uh, thank you to everybody who came here tonight yes yes thank you um uh this special episode is brought to you by joseco royale joseco royale Mexico's finest champagne, uh, Jose oh. Royale, you'll say, Jole. Also brought to you by Astral Chat, and Slater from Land of Doom has an announcement later in the show. Let's give it up for our wonderful sponsors here tonight. All right, all right. By the way, Anthony, um, um, the hotel ballroom is a little, is a little cramped. I mean, um, as you can see, we have our studio audience here. It's made up of... Uh, some ho- hotel guests here and, and some people from the neighborhood. Um, we're in a very old, historic neighborhood, a uh, very interesting neighborhood. Um, um, and also my room, Anthony, by the way, I'm in the basement. Um, um, is that the way this whole hotel works here? I'm on the basement level though. And I think I found some, sorry, can we just let that person in this in the studio audience maybe keep their dog down? Okay. No, yeah, I found some needles in my room, about, you know, two in the bathtub and one on the floor I almost stepped on. Just saying. Jordan, you, you got us this room. I mean, and, and I mean, look at this ballroom. It's it's packed with people. Who are all these people? I, I thought, like, how do we get a crowd in here? I thought it was just supposed to be. Well, I, I handed out flyers at the bus station and. Um... Jordan, we have to pay for all of this. It was just supposed to be friends and fans and, and, and a few celebrity guests. We can't afford all I, this. How, how'd, you, how'd you do How'd you pay for this, Jordan? I used the company card. Uh, the robots took my podcast, you know, uh, in Corp Inc. Uh, credit card, whatever you call so we it. Don't, you know? We don't have a company credit card, Jordan. We're not even a company. The, We're barely a podcast. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, uh, it, it was a Visa gift card that I share with my wife, um, maybe. that Maybe I got that mixed up. Um, I thought it said robots took my podcast ink on there. Oh, <laughs> Silly oh me. God. Damn. Jordan. Jordan, wait, wait, wait. Is this is this a cash bar? Do we have a cash bar here? No, it's free. Uh, it's a free uh, bar. It's not cash bar. <laughs> it's our 50th, Anthony. Come on. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, you, put that chicken down. Everyone stop drinking. Everyone stop drinking now. From deep within the heart of Mexico's champagne region comes Prosecco Royale, Mexico's oldest and finest sparkling wine. Generations of champanaderos have crafted their art so that you could savor the passion and tradition in each sip. Look for the label with Jose Prosecco himself and his donkey Pepe. Raise a glass of Prosecco Royale at your next celebration. The only champagne with a worm at the bottom of the bottle. Prosecco Royale is a trademark of Alfredo Garcia Beverages. Please drink responsibly. Okay, we're back, everyone. Um, we are back. Wow. Uh, hopefully, hopefully we have things sorted out. Wow. What a what a great 50th this is, Anthony. I'm loving our sponsors' uh, stuff here. Mm, what a beautiful audience. Yeah. So... This isn't our normal episode, Jordan, where we have a lot of uh, celebrity guests planned. We have a capsule review, a short review of a movie you and I both love, uh, and some surprise guests planned for later on, and some surprises yeah. all night. It's going to be 
a fantastic cavalcade of stars. Just just a, a memorable night for everybody, uh, including those four unhoused gentlemen over there who've been to the bar four times already. It's okay. Everybody here is welcome, Anthony. Um, and, and yes, many celebrity guests via Astral Chat. Uh, plug in our sponsor, Astral Chat, once again. Yes. Be it living or dead, they can contact you. Uh, and Anthony... <laughs> You know, we have a surprise guest here. Um, you know, we, we couldn't get our own musical number like they uh, like they have at the Oscars with a big choreographer, you know, like Kenny Ortega or somebody. So, yeah, Jordan, what what surprise guest? I didn't. I don't know about this. Who? Uh, who Dottie. Is this? Dottie. She's been a burlesque dancer since 1948. Can you believe it, Anthony? Where's 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 this music coming from, Jordan? Well, there she is, right there, Anthony. There oh she my is. God. Look at that, like Dottie. Jordan, this is supposed to be a family. Look at her, event. shake it. She still has it. Look at that, Anthony. But look at that. Can you I, not I, appreciate the art of this? I, mean, I don't know if she ever had it. She still got it. Look at that. How much are we look paying her, Jordan? Go, girl. You, you got How it. How much are... Stop. Don't go, oh, we're girl. We're paying How... her from the, the company card once again. No, no, no. I mean, the Visa, my wife's Visa gift card. Yeah. But also, there's an ATM nearby. That helped. You know, an ATM that spits out tens. That everyone stop. Helped. Everyone stop. Everyone sit, sit down. Sit down, everyone. Um, she's she's doing this as a favor to me, Anthony. She's a, she's an old friend. How how old is she? Ninety five. She's still got it. This feels like my grandparents' wedding night, Jordan. Thank thank you, Dottie. Thank you for so much. Please no, thank you no. Please yeah. All right. Well, okay. yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, yeah, Dottie. Thank you, Dottie. Please, Anthony. You really everybody, know how to bring the room down. Sit down, down. I mean, come everybody. On. God, Anthony. All right. Well. Thank you. I, Jordan, no more surprises, okay? Let's, you know. I, I thought you'd be happy. I'm kind of, you know. Well, Dottie is still with us, everybody, but uh, a lot of our celebrity guests today might not be. Our sponsor for this evening is Astral Chat. Astral Chat. Yeah. Want to talk to celebrities who have passed? Try Astral Chat. Uh, talk to what might actually be dead celebrities or maybe someone doing a bad impression. Who knows? Who cares? For your next party, use Astral Chat. So I, here at the device, here at the app, it's... I think we've got a uh, somebody tuning in right now. Let's see. I'm getting some celebs. Maybe we've talked to Tuning last, somebody Jordan. in. Hello? Hello? That... Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Is that, is that Doug McClure? Yeah, hey there, hey there, robots. Hey Anthony, there, I think it's Doug McClure, Anthony. Wow, hey, Doug. How are you, Doug? Good to have you on. Uh, hey there, buddy. I, I, I just do, I'm doing great. Uh, how are you guys doing out there? We're, we're great. Me? We're all, dr yeah, I, I can hear you. Sorry. Well, I just want to say happy, ha ha happy 50th, robots. Uh, uh, keep, it, keep it, keep it, keep it coming. Love you. Thank you, Doug. Doug McClure, ladies and gentlemen. Doug McClure from our uh, Humanoids from the Deep episode. Yeah, Doug oh, McClure. I hated that movie. Hated that. Why don't you talk about some like better movies? Maybe we will, Doug. Maybe we will. All right. Next, Jordan. Who else? Let's see. Is this uh, device pulling in? Oh, oh. How does it feel to be on top? Wait, who is that? Is that is that That's, Al Pacino? How that he's but he's like alive. The, Wait a minute, maybe this thing is not working as well as it should. But I mean, you know, Astral Chat's whole uh, slogan is alive or dead, you can contact through us. So yeah. Oh, how does it feel to be on top, fellas? Oh, podcasts are my favorite sin. Oh, so basic. Oh, happy 50th, everyone. Happy 50th. Oh. All right, Al Pacino in that. Al Pacino, not the are real you? Al Pacino, at least. An astral chat, Al Pacino, certainly. Maybe he left his body to, you know, go through astral chat. I didn't, it's amazing, that astral chat technology, I tell you. Al, are you still there? Oh, I gotta go. Sorry. Give me one to drop. Give me one to drop. Uh, oh, maybe he's talking to somebody. Okay. Wow. Oh, oh wait. There's somebody else coming through, Anthony. I, I, hang on. Oh, I look around. I see listeners. Maybe. Happy 50th. Is that Chris Walken, Anthony? It's Chris Walken. Wow. He's alive too, man. I, this astral chat is amazing. He's, he's alive too. Is this thing working? How are we getting? I don't know, man. Surely this is from somewhere else. I mean, I don't I know. I look around. I see listeners. Maybe 50 listeners. No more. Happy 50th. I'm just, I'm just walking through, fellas, saying hi. Well, uh, swung by just to drop off that dad joke. I'm on my way out. I'm walking out. 
astral chat. Wow, that that's get what you pay for. All right, all right, all right, Jordan. So, um, who else have we got going on here? Somebody else uh, coming through here. Someone else coming through, spinning the wheel. Oh, who is this? Ah, who is this? Who is that rapping at my chamber door? That's Edgar Allan Poe. This is appropriate enough. Chuck Heston, is that you? Chuck, is that you? Yeah, Chuck. How much do I get paid for this? Uh, well, Chuck, you're on the other side, aren't you? I mean, uh, uh, Anthony. Yeah. Why does he think he's getting paid? I didn't tell. You, I didn't tell him about this. Ah, well, I heard it was your fiftieth uh, radio episode. Yeah, podcast episode. Podcast episode. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, happy fiftieth. Thank you, Chuck. Thank you. All right. Well, Chuck Heston, everyone. Yeah, Chuck Heston. yeah, yeah. He's got, and it's, yeah, Chuck Heston from Soylent Green. Showed up all over the place. And I'm reading this. Astral Chat wants to remind you that the pay service add-on will cost extra, and Astral Chat is not responsible for any payments sent to uh, Astral Chat celebrities. So use caution and common sense. I think I hear somebody else. Hang on. Uh, Don't touch the head. Don't touch the head. Is that John Travolta? John Travolta from The Devil's Reign. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I got this technology from Scientology, baby. If I go to a Scientology center, I can, I can actually beam my voice anywhere, beam my body at the same time. Astral Chat kind of helps with that. Astral Chat, living or dead, you can contact. Thanks, John, for the free plug. Thank you. Thanks, John, for the plug there. Yeah. All right. Anyway, All right. I'm out of here. Don't touch the head. Mr. Cat. Okay, thank you so much, John. <laughs> now I don't. Something's coming in here. I don't understand. What is this one? This is this is. Astral Chat says Tom's leg. Oh my God! Is it? No way! Tom's leg from Shriek of the Mutilated, the one we raved about his performance. Oh, that Tom's leg! Oh my God! Wow. He's here. It's impossible! Wow! Tom's leg. How are you? Hey, hey guys. guys, we really did it. Congrats. Happy fiftieth! <laughs> it's great hearing from you. Hey, Tom's leg. What are you? What are you up to these days? I'm so, so glad you asked. I've been wanting to tell everyone. I'm on Broadway right now. I'm playing Hamlet's leg. Oh, really? To pay the bills. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> not really. <laughs> <laughs> Tom's <laughs> leg. <laughs> I did. I just did cats right before that. I did a cat's paw. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm really. What a versatile actor! My goodness, we can't wait. We can't wait to see what you're up to next. Everyone, go out and see Tom's leg. I've also got a uh, coffee commercial coming up. Anyway, but yeah, yeah. Listen, I gotta go, guys. I've got an audition tomorrow at uh, really early in the morning. I've got two, in fact. Wow. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> What a talent, Tom's leg! What Love a that talent. guy! Wow, amazing! Yeah. What a shriek of the mutilated! You know, I, I didn't know he would be busy after that, man. That's amazing. We ra- here we raved about his performance at Shriek, and here he is on Broadway now. It's amazing. Boy, it I'm, is I'm amazing. really happy for Tom's leg. I couldn't be happier. Shook off shriek of the mutilated stink, and then now just look at what he's done. This is fantastic. Wow, yeah. it's probably my favorite guest so far. So far, man. man. I can't. <laughs> All right, Amazing. I see. I'm tuning the dial. Let's see, little. It's the app is going, and who is this? Oh, this this is weird. This is we're getting a signal from the past. We're getting young Mickey Rourke. Is this? Am I seeing this right here on the? Yeah. I really like this podcast, but you're pushing my patience. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry guys. Just to uh, give you a little line there. Um, yeah, it's me. Young Mickey Rourke. Yeah. You know, I'm really happy for you guys. You know, I started selling walnuts in Central Park before I became an actor, you know. And, you know, sometimes you got to roll the potatoes. So happy 50th, guys. Happy 50th. Wow. Young Mickey Rourke. I, kn- I know. Mickey Rourke. I love you, man. And I love you in Rumblefish, by the way. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Pope of Greenwich Village. Wow. Somebody gotta put the fish in the sea. <laughs> yeah, Pope of Greenwich Village. My God, I wish we could have Eric Roberts beam in here somehow. I don't know. For some reason, Eric Roberts is banned off Astral Chat. I don't know why. That, what that means. Oh, no, really? I yeah, I don't think we can get him. I'm sorry. Oh man. Oh well. Yeah, young okay. Mickey Rourke. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, guys. Oh, thank you, Mickey Rourke. Thank you. Wow. Young Mickey Rourke, everyone. Young Mickey Rourke. And Mickey Rourke. Good God. Wow. I can't believe these guests. Yeah. Amazing guests. Wow. All these guests. Let me take another sip of my champagne and toast these guys. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Who else is coming in next, Jordan? William Shatner, the Shat himself. William Shatner? Man, he's just. He's still alive. How are we getting William Shatner on this thing? 
I was in outer space, and now I'm beaming in through astral check technology. Well, thanks, William. Well, it's really great to have you here. Yeah, we talked about you on Devil's Reign. Loved you in Devil's Reign. You remember that movie, Devil's Reign? Devil's Reign. Fuck that movie. Fuck those guys. I never paid me. It's all I have to say. Oh. Oh, yeah, Brian. Whoops. Right. Wow. He's really serious. How, how much are you paying me for the, this podcast? Huh? How much? Oh. Oh. Um. How much are you paying Corbis? Oh, about that. Yeah, uh, yeah, again, I don't know this thing's getting wonky. I think we're losing Shatner again. Um, yeah, thanks, thanks. Yeah, Mr. I Shatner. guess we have a... Uh, sorry. Don't act like I'm not here. I'm still here. Whoops. Don't try to ghost me through this thing. I think we lost him. Jeez. All right. Uh, yeah, too bad. Wow, that was great. Yeah, a lot of great stars coming in to say hi. Yeah, I think somebody else is coming through here. These meatball subs you guys got here are, are delicious. This is wonderful. Gary Busey. Happy 50th, guys. Oh, thanks, Mr. Busey. Thanks, Gary. Sir Gary Busey, everyone. Wow. I'm a long-time listener. Long-time listener. I've, I've listened to uh, one or two episodes. Two of them. Two, uh, two episodes. Keep it up. Oh, well, it's a pleasure, Mr. Busey. We're a fan of your work. Yeah, th- thanks for this open bar. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah sure. Enjoy yourself. Uh, Right, Anthony? Uh, I mean, come on. I yeah. mean, it's Gary Busey. Come on. I mean, let, we can chill a few drinks for him. It's all, yeah, every, everybody, everyone drinks for free. Anyway, all right. Um, oh, my God. Is that somebody else like coming looks like Astral through? Chat's got a few more. Uh, hey, does everybody here want to hear from more of our prize celebrity guests via our sponsor, Astral Chat? Wow, what a enthusiastic audience. Yeah. I love you all. Love yeah, you that's, all. Uh, that's... Um, who is that? Oh, I don't like your podcast. You're shit. And your podcast is shit also. Where's my 17 million? Happy 50th. Oh, oh. Uh, hi, but was that Sean Connery? That was Sean Connery doing a, a drive-by Connery. Talk uh, about a drive-by. Jeez. You have to you have to see Jordan about that, that 17 million. Oh, oh, thanks. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. Jordan, do you have my 17 million? I'll see you tomorrow night. I'll be haunting your wife in her sleep. Oh, shit. Damn, Anthony. What have I done? What have you done? You've meddled with the forces of darkness with uh with Astral Chat. You pissed off the wrong dead celebrity here. Yeah, this is like uh, our my own uh, Devil's Reign now, but with Sean Connery's ghost. Thanks, Anthony. Connery's Reign. That's right, Connery's Reign. I'm lo- I'm losing you, Sean. All right, another Astral Chat person's coming in. This is it's Val Kilmer from Tombstone. Happy fiftieth, robots. I'm your Huckleberry. Wow, Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer in Tombstone. That's, That's just my game. game. Wow. Yeah, how are we getting people? Well, this this app is so good. You get people from movies, <laughs> from roles in movies. Yeah, we like we get them in that time period. It's amazing. It's like they're. Can we piggyback off this? Can we get Kurt Russell? No, we got uh, Val Kilmer. Can we get? Well, Kurt hey, how, how you guys, guys doing? doing? It's Kurt Russell. Happy fifty. Kurt. Wow, this is a pleasure. Kurt Russell from Tombstone. It's a pleasure. It's all my pleasure, Anthony. Thank you. You know, what's Jordan's problem is on this podcast, though, is he doesn't know his lines half the time. Oh, you know yeah. what old Jack Burton says when the 50th comes? Take your best shot. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, you know what, Kurt? I'll Kurt take it. Kurt Russell. You know? Wow. I'm, I'm okay with you calling me out like that. I'm okay with it. Kurt Russell, every, he's gone. Only wow. Kurt Russell. <laughs> Wow, Astral Chat, this thing works. Getting astral celebrities. Somehow we're getting people who are still living. I don't know. Yeah. Tana. Tana. Oh. Is that Who's, oh, I remember this voice. George Papard. George Papard? Yeah, from Damnation Alley. Hey, fellas. You know you can get some, uh, some parts for the vehicle when we get to Michigan. You know that, right? Yeah, that's yeah, sure, George. Yeah, um, that's good. Good. Yeah, good to know, George. George Prepard from Damnation Alley. It's his from spirit Damnation from Damnation Alley, Alley yeah. somehow imbued into the astral chat technology. Amazing. Boy, astral chat is really reaching here. Okay. Wow. Tana, you got any cocaine? Maybe a bump? Something for this 50th? You got a drink for me? If I could uh, send you a drink, honestly, George, from, from here, I would. Um, I don't know how. Can't really do it from the astral te- technology, but. Yeah, George, I think we're losing you. I think we're losing you. No, I'm not here. I'm still here. Oh, no, I think we're losing you. Sorry. Yeah, we're, we're losing you. Why couldn't we get Hannibal, at least from A-Team, at some point, you know? <laughs> we don't have the Astral Chat premium subscription. Everyone, Astral Chat, be oh, sure to, right. uh, yeah. yeah, pay levels there. Uh, membership uh, tiers, yeah. 
this thing is worth the forty nine ninety nine a month uh, subscription. I will say. I mean, it's a bit much, but you know what? It's amazing. This technology is amazing. Who? Somebody else is coming through, here, Anthony. Is it the kid from Dick Tracy? What do we? What do we? Oh, it is the kid. Hey, kid, how are you doing? Go suck it, A. Wow, that that that's a kid. Wow. The kid from Dick Tracy, everyone. All right, and this and this uh, this segment can go suck an egg, I think. Um, so, <laughs> everyone, thank you. Our celebrity guest brought to you by our special sponsor, Astral Chat. Astral Chat. Astral Chat, amazing. Talk to people who may be celebrities. May I don't know. I don't know how this works. Maybe alive, maybe dead. Apparently, roles in movies. There's just no. God, it's amazing. No rhyme or reason to how this wonderful app appears to work. But yeah, try it out. All right, Jordan. And now we are going to do for the audience our well, like I guess what we're known for here: a mini review, a capsule review of a movie I discovered not that long ago, really, but have since sort of fallen in love with. A movie called Night of the Cobra Jade. From 1979, and yes. we're going to do a mini review. Uh, but first, we're going to play the trailer through New World Pictures and Embassy International. First of all, it's no ordinary cleanup job. I want to mingle with the little people. Based on the best-selling book by Percy Redmond, Night of the Cobra Jade. One night, one heist. A lot of blood. <laughs> Once we take out one of those bananas, we gotta wipe out the rest of them in 30 minutes. Here they come. Remember, every three seconds. Mr. Man, in your respectful positions, and we take care of business. We're gonna get it done quick. Did the house get a percentage? 30,000 American dollars. You got it. William Smith, Mac Davis, Jim Kelly, Marjo Gordon, Andy Dickinson, Cameron Mitchell, with special appearance by Yul Brynner. Many men have died. For the Cobra Jade. It has a curse on it. We're gonna go together. There are two parties after. Th- but one of the medallions is a fake. Hate to break it to you. Night of the Cobra Jade. Rated R. All right, we're back. Hope you enjoyed that trailer. And, and Jordan, tell us about how you first discovered this movie. You turned me on to it. I uh, I saw this on Cinemax late night when I was in my teens. It came on after Emmanuel in Bangkok. Um, anyway, that's in the I don't I won't go there. But anyway, and then later on, I found the VHS. And um, man, just what a movie! This what what a what a gem of, of a movie this is. Yeah, never really released on DVD. I think it it um, it was on cable a lot. And certainly on uh, VHS, I think, but I just kind of, I think a movie that more people should really discover. From a book by Percy Redblund, the author yeah. of Carlos the Jackal, Carlos the Lover, and the Terrorist Brings Flowers, Midnight in Algiers, and the Bucharest Connection. I mean, my God. Those are all big titles, books from the, uh, the 70s, 80s. And had a had a great kind of like you know Stephen King or some of these other authors whose works are turned into movies. Um, let's just jump into it, Jordan. So this is a New World movie, New World released picture, New World Pictures, yeah, yeah. A joint U.S. and Italian production, bigger overseas, I think, than it was here. And Jordan, you know, I loves me a heist movie. Loves me yeah, a dude. heist movie. Uh, that's why I knew uh, you would love this one when I introduced you to it, of course. Yes, because oh, yeah. uh, you do love a heist movie. Because you love the planning and all that and the way they, they always go down the same way. There's a almost structure to heist movies. Anyway. And this movie this movie has a lot of heisting, I will say. it's And it's got a couple planning sequences for sure. Um, yes. It stars William Smith in a movie that's kind of like an Ocean's Eleven of the 70s. And William Smith, big action um I wouldn't call him an action star, but sort of a a character actor. He sure worked a lot. He worked a lot. I mean, his IMDb page is a mile long. Uh, Always played kind of the heavy, the tough guy. You know, he knew martial arts, stuntman. I mean, he was just just a fantastic presence on film as as well. And here he carries a movie, finally. You know, he's he's the main protagonist. Yes. And uh, who else do we have in this film? We have the great karate expert, Jim Kelly. Yeah, from... Black Belt Jones, all sorts. The list goes on. I mean, he's a karate expert. Um, 
in one scene that he we see him and when we first meet him he's in a pit full of cobra snakes that's how we wow. meet him yeah um and this movie was also shot in the philippines uh as well as uh rome but yeah he walks into a building in rome and also we're we're half in the philippines and uh halfway in italy when we meet him they they shoot they shoot like all over the place yeah and this movie looks cheap. Like it, it seems like you get a Roman, a, an establishing shot in Rome somewhere, and then it's like when they enter the the building, it's like it it looks like the Philippines. It was like they were real cheap here, or stock footage of Rome, and then you're in the Philippines. You know, it's weird. You can tell there was a lot of last minute pickup shots done in the Philippines and Rome, where they're trying to pass like Rome and the Philippines off for America you know, American locations kind of thing. It's kind of, yeah. Anyway, it's kind of laughable. Yeah. Anyway. And so the MacGuffin in this movie, tell us about the MacGuffin. It's the Cobra Jade. And it's, it's this uh, ancient Jade statue, basically that was uh, from the emperor Xi Jing. It was from the ninth dynasty of China in the 16th century, man. I mean, you know, well, it's more and, like a medallion. About... It's not really a statue. It's more like a little, Oh, I'm sorry. Jewelry yeah. or something. It's more like a medallion. Uh, the Cobra Jade is more like a, a medallion kind of thing as, as a MacGuffin. And um, when we see this in the flashback, you know, we can clearly see that this is an Italian actor with bad makeup on. Playing playing the emperor. <laughs> playing yeah. the emperor. I mean, yeah. I don't know what to say about the way they portray the emperor in this in the flashback. It just, yeah. So we find out where there's a curse on this thing as well because of this flashback, because the emperor's daughter dies of sickness after he, he's basically killed somebody to own this thing. So um, there's a curse from the get go. Just bad shit happens from the get go with this. It's thing. it's cursed and hanging over the whole movie is this curse on the Cobra Jade. And then, so yeah. William Smith gets everyone together. He gets Jim Kelly, who's the karate expert. Um, and then the Cobra Jade is coming to this museum in LA, right? They're going to break Being in and get there, it. Yeah. Yeah. So who do we have next in this movie? Uh, who else? It's a whole team he's assembling. And let's just run through them real quick. So we have next Mac Davis. And who's who's Mac Davis, Jordan? Mac Davis. I mean, famous songwriter, actor, Mac Davis, especially in the 70s. I wrote the song, baby, baby, don't get hooked on me. You know, I wrote a lot of songs for Elvis Presley. Um, and big actor in the 70s, North Dallas 40 with Nick Nolte. I mean, yeah. you know, he's really good in that movie, by the way. That's a weird ass movie. Yeah. But and he is a wise cracking safe cracker in this movie. He gets all the best lines. He gets he's like kind of the comic relief. And then we have someone we've talked about before, Marjo Gortner. Right. Marjo Gortner playing the demolition. Yeah, talked guy. about him yeah. in Star Crash and oh, yeah. And, and uh, John Binder's episode. Yeah. He talked about uh, Marjo a little bit. Actually worked with the guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who does Marjo play in this movie? He's the demolition expert. He can put a bomb on anything, be it the bottom of a chair, as we find out, the back of a clock. Secretly, he's very uh, he's very stealthy also. And he and Mac Davis have these scenes where they're con well, apparently they're fr they're kind of friendly in the movie. But behind the scenes, apparently Marjo and Mac Davis, fun fact, uh, didn't like each other. They they fought over the hair people that were going to be their hair people, the makeup people. They fought over who had the bigger trailer. It got ugly behind the scenes. Wow. Yeah. Their scenes had to be shot. Uh, Mac Davis and Marjo's uh, scenes had to be shot separately because the drama got so bad between them. In fact, anytime they're in a scene together, it's clear that they're shot months apart from each other. I think the director really struggled with that. Oh, and who directed this movie, Jordan? Yeah, this is directed by um, Winston Heinrich, German director. He directed a lot of television later on. Uh, yeah. He directed a lot of McLeod, a lot of episodes of Fall Guy. And he had, a, he had an accent and a way of directing things. He was almost like, apparently people said he's a real taskmaster too. Yeah. He literally, like the classic Eric von Stroheim kind of director. Yeah. And I, I heard that he and Percy Redblun clashed behind the scenes because, well, I think Percy, 
Yeah, I they, they it, did not get along. Percy Redblood and Winston Heinrich were at each other's throats. Even after yeah. they t- tried to have a drink and talk it out, it, it, it still ended with a with a fight and a spat. And in fact, Percy threw his glass at Winston at this, this hotel bar at one point when they were trying to talk. Yeah. Anyway. Percy was notoriously hard to deal with. And definitely this director was not, I, probably not someone he'd get along with. But I think Percy probably wanted, if I had to guess, to direct the movie himself. I don't know. Percy was like known as the writer who fought for his word, who fought yeah. for his ink. That's what they called him in Hollywood, apparently. Yeah, he just he he liked to fight though. At the same time, I feel yeah. like the same. He liked to argue. So maybe yeah. part of it was that. I, so, I, I shouldn't say this since we're about to, you know. Anyway, mm-hmm. and also I don't know why, but apparently it was in his contract. We keep finding Mac Davis in hot tubs in this movie. Yeah, that's the, I don't know what it was. Like, there's a lot of hot tubs in this movie to begin with. And there's a lot of hot tub expositions. Like, the scene, this is ridiculous, but the scene in which they're all sort of planning the heist, like William Smith standing there, but like three or four people are all sitting in hot tubs. Like, I don't think that's the best way to plan a heist, Jordan. You know, with all that hot water around and I don't know, maps and things. It's, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. But that makes at sense. one point too, Mac know. Davis jump. He walks out of the hot tub at one point, and we see everything. It's pretty shocking. Yeah, it's unnecessary. Yeah, I don't know why they kept that in, but you know, I I heard Winston Heinrich actually argued to keep that in. He convinced Mac Davis it was a good idea to show his junk. Apparently, in the movie. Yeah, yeah. I don't know why everyone's in a hot tub. Then we see Joe Don Baker in a hot tub in this scene, and I it's something yes, I didn't need to see. He's in the same hot tub with Mac Davis. It's a big ass hot tub, mind you, folks. Just don't yeah. get the wrong idea here. It's not like the Spartacus scene. <laughs> he's got that big fat cigar. He's choking. He's choking on to at the same time. Yeah. Anyway, so Joe Don Baker of oh my god, Joe Don Walking Baker. Tall. I, I love that he's in this movie. He's great in this movie too. Walking Tall, uh, Mitchell from nineteen seventy six. Mitchell. Uh, he um, was a, he was in a, one of the Bond movies. Which one was he in? Is the the villain Living Daylights? Yeah, Living he's Daylights. one of the villains. And yeah, he's also in. But he was also played Felix Leiter in the later uh, Pierce Brosnan movies. He played Felix Leiter actually. Yeah, and so very interesting career. Uh, good old boy sort of actor, and he is he's, he's he plays South, the yeah, Joe Don Baker. Yeah. yeah, he plays the getaway driver. And then we Angie Dickinson is in this movie. She plays this female vamp, um, female con woman who can basically get in and get anything. And she's they're going to send her in to get the codes from the security guards uh, so they can break into this museum. But we don't see, unfortunately, Angie Dickinson in a hot tub in this movie, unfortunately. Yeah, we, we, we don't. In fact, I heard when, her and Winston Heinrich, they were constantly arguing as well, apparently. Angie Dickinson, that wasn't that high maintenance either. That's the thing. Well, he wanted her. He wanted her to take her clothes off a lot more than she was comfortable. What? With. Oh, why? Wait, God, and, he wanted everybody to get naked, including Mac Davis. Apparently, Jeez, I, he what wanted was everyone naked in this movie. I don't know if he knew what kind of movie he was making. Yeah. Well, he did have a background of softcore movies mostly, though. That makes sense. I forgot to mention yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, didn't he do? He did one of the Emanuels, like one of the later Emanuels, I think. He did. Uh, he did some in the '90s, um, like before he died in the late '90s. Actually, he directed some. He directed Emanuel in um, South Dakota. That was one of them. And then I think there was yeah, another one. one. I think it was Viva La Emanuel. That's what it was called. Anyway. So anyway, yeah. And the bad guy is Cameron Mitchell. Cameron Mitchell. Cameron Mitchell, who was just in everything. His career spans decades. Just just a, a stalwart old action movie actor. We just we just got a great scene where he's he's plotting but to steal the, the Cobra Jade and, and then we have these two groups converging on the museum the night it's put there and, and I love the scene all the lights are sort of going off and the security guards are there and then you see like the laser grid and things like that you know it's just a really fun and intense scene but then all shit breaks loose all, or all hell breaks loose they break in the museum to get it and then everyone just ends up shooting the guards and then Cameron Mitchell and his thugs get into it and then Cameron, Cameron Mitchell just gets shot. And we're, we're like halfway through the movie. This is why I was like, what the hell is going on here? The bad guy gets shot and killed and his guys get killed. And then you're like, what What the hell? What the hell? And then William Smith and the crew, they, they just kind of like bum rush in and, and steal the Cobra Jade. 
right? And then get away. Yeah. Action packed, Pee Wee. Action packed. And then Jordan, like, okay, Cameron Mitchell and his guys are dead. They got the cover Jade movie over, right? Then what happens? No. They take it to this appraiser, uh, the stolen goods dealer played by Paul Lind. All right. Paul Lind. I mean, Paul Lind. Anthony, who is Paul Lind? My God. Paul Lind, star of the Paul Lind Halloween special, star of Hollywood Squares for a game show for many years. He was the center square, I think, a lot of times. The center uh, square for years, man. I mean, you know, and he he died tragically. He was on a TV show, an old TV show called Bewitched. And sadly, I don't think ever got his due, but he was sort of just an amazing personality, but a comedic actor. I don't know what he's doing in this movie. I don't recall seeing him. This is more, I think, what he wanted to do, though. This is like more serious, like what he would have liked to. I think Paul Lynn would have liked to have had more roles, like his role as the appraiser in Night of the Cobra Jade, because he's very serious in this movie. Yeah, he's great. He really shows his acting chops. I've never seen him in a dramatic role before, and I kind of like that. So, Jordan, they take the Cobra Jade to him, and what does he say? What is he? What happens? There's this great moment. He says, How much is it worth? Maybe a hundred bucks on the street. The Jade's not even real. There are two medallions, and only one is real. This one's a fake. Hate to break it to you. Back when Emperor Xi Jing had possessed one, he had a fake made. And it was sent all the way to South Africa. Don't ask me why, but that's what happened. It's like all this was for naught. So they've got the fake Cobra Jade. And William Smith is fucking pissed at this point. And everyone's really fucking pissed. But then what does he say? What does um, Paul Lynn say to them? There's another one. The other one is in the Philippines. Hate to break it to you. <laughs> I love the that. one that came from it. South Africa. <laughs> Somehow... The Kelber Jade is being brought to the Philippines. It's hidden inside this other historical vase or uh, ceramic piece. Nobody knows the Cobra Jade's in there. And so everyone's like, okay, so now we have to go to the Philippines. What a great way to get them to the Philippines, Jordan. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's kind of that's genius rewriting on Percy Redblund's part after being yelled at by Winston Heinrich. Well, I, I think in the movie... Like, they go to Manila in the Philippines. That wasn't in the book, though, from what I know. That wasn't in the book, book. I don't think. From what I haven't read the book, but from what I could find, it was like they go to Cairo in the book, I think. Yes. Something like that. But anyway, so now we're off to the Philippines. And then we find out there's another party, another group of bad guys. Cameron Mitchell's dead, right? The the villain's gone. No, we get another villain. Yeah. And who plays the other villain who has the crew who's going to to the Philippines at the same time to get the Cobra Jade? Who plays it? Yul Brenner. Surprise. Yul Brenner of? Who is Yul Brenner for everybody? Uh, I mean, the Ten Commandments. He played the Ten Commandments. He was so good. He played the Ten Commandments themselves. He played the Ten Commandments himself in the Ten... No, no. (laughs) Uh, No, he played played, um, Ramesses in Ten Commandments. Charlton Heston's adversary. He was like the bad guy in Ten Commandments, basically. Yeah. Uh, Westworld, the original Westworld from 1973. Um, the King and I, and yeah, Magnificent was, Seven. The King and I, my God, how could I leave out the King and I? Jeez. The Magnificent Seven. But yeah. Uh, so, we, yeah, we have uh, what? Yul Brynner's crew is after the real one. They're going after the real one. And this this movie just keeps you guessing. I want to tell you that. It's just, it's, here we are in the middle. Great pivot i guess it's a great pivot just a whole second you get like a second movie it feels like a matinee almost i don't know if that's good maybe that works in a novel i don't know if that works in the movie we'll talk about that in a little bit yeah like a double feature in one movie but yeah so now we're off to manila it's like a bond movie or something and with a lot of stock footage thrown in for some reason man i you know where did they cut corners in this movie it's weird because I heard this movie had a decent budget, you know. I wonder where this money was going. Like they paid the actors, sure, big chunks of money. Anyway, well, they had to keep Joe Don Baker fed. I mean, you know, he he had his own craft services table, and all these big name actors. I I, I think that's part of the struggle for this movie is they had a they had to option the, the novel, yeah, and then they had to pay all these actors, and after that, that's why they're filming in the Philippines with all this like stock footage. But even then, you can tell it kind of feels like a cheap movie. 
now you remind me of something I read. I read that the Italian producers complained about how much the actors per diem was on this movie. Uh, they blame that for part of the movie going over budget, apparently. Yeah. And they, they kept going over. Apparently, they kept saying, per diem, per diem. Yeah. It's the only English they knew, but they... Yeah, they, they just yelled just right back meant. at the American side of the production. So you think Angie Dickinson's in this movie. She, she and William Smith are sort of strolling, sort of on the beach. And you think they're going to fall in love. But no, who does she hook up with? Who is her love interest in this movie, Jordan? And who does she have this Joe Don ridiculous... Baker Joe Don Baker. They have a ridiculous love scene. And oddly, they have chemistry, don't you think? I mean, yeah, I think they kind of do. But it, it's like... Angie Dickinson, who's beautiful, and Joe Don Baker, who's a, a walrus of a man. But I, I did read that she wouldn't be in the same bed with him in the love scene, so they have a body double for her. Every time he has to kiss her or hold her, it's a yeah. body double you see in the movie. He, was, he sweat too much, I think, was part of the problem. And then uh, Ooh. so we get a few wow. notable cameos here <laughs> in this movie. Hey, who do we get a cameo from? In this, uh, scene, I mean, we um, get a, a cameo from friggin' Frank Stallone, uh, uh, Sly's brother, Frank, uh, playing the, the waiter in this scene with Joe Don Baker and um, Angie Dickinson after they've made love in the hotel hot tub. I think it was the hotel hot tub, yeah. Yeah. So then everyone gets ready for the Cobra Jade heist, and we see that I would say that it's real weird. Brenner's character almost has like this spiritual connection with the thing. He knows all about the history of it. We get more of the history from him than yeah. we do um, anywhere else, and sort of how he's been spending his life looking for this. You know, he knew the other one was a fake, and so here it is. It's sort of culmination of his life's work. Oh, yeah, yeah. You think we should play a clip real quick of that? Yeah, so yeah, we, we hear a clip here. For centuries, the Cobra Jade has claimed many a men's lives because there is a curse on it. I know this because the Cobra Jade also killed my family. My father and my grandfather. I have spent my life searching for the Cobra Jade. Wow, Yul Brenner, great in that movie. God, let the guy read the phone book. I know, it's just, Cameron Mitchell's character was just looking for the thing because for the money, but for him, it's almost revenge. You know what I mean? To possess it. Yeah. You know, to face the curse. I think that's what it is, yeah. because it's like, it's like he has to possess his own soul. It's like really deep on that level. It's like he's searching for his soul to, to get back yeah. his soul. I love this movie, but let's just, Yul Brenner's <laughs> almost too good for this. He, he makes the movie better. He elevates the material. He elevates the character. Um, I don't know what the novel was but like. But they paid him like $3 million for this movie, apparently. That's, yeah. that's why I don't understand where this money went, some of this on this yeah. budget, why it looks cheap on some parts, you know, anyway. Yeah, and then for no reason, they're training. They, they, we get sort of a training montage, not a montage, but a training scene because they're going to, the, the Cobra Jade is being presented at this palace, this like real rich guy. He's got this palace, he's, but he has like an exposition. He's letting people in for one night to uh, see the, the works that are there, including the ceramic that has the Cobra Jade in it. So they're going to go storm this palace and they're, they have this training sequence sort of where they're plotting everything out. And for no reason, I don't know how many bears there are in the Philippines, Jordan, but a bear like attacks them and Jodon Baker wrestles a freaking bear. Like you cannot make this up. This is ridiculous. One of the most ridiculous scenes I think I've seen in a long time in a movie. I think the producers were like a fan of the movie Grizzly, honestly, or something. But yeah, it's <laughs> like we get this for no reason at all. Maybe they just want to see Joe Don Baker in a fight wrestling a bear. I don't know. Yeah. Like, what were the screenwriters smoking? Like, you know, it'd be cool. But let's make Joe Don Baker's character wrestle a bear. Fuck you. But yeah, he wrestles a bear. He takes his shirt off. It's so unnecessary. Yeah. He throws down like a redneck. I mean, he's just like, come on, bear. And uh, he tells the other guys to go on without him as he wrestles the bear. So we don't know whether he's going to live or die at this point in the rest of the movie. And it, really, it really raises the stakes for his character. Yeah, and, and Angie Dickinson is just like, she's, I don't know, she's not doing anything. Like, they have guns, I don't They got her a great reaction out of her, like she's turned on. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. It's creepy, it's weird. She's kind of turned on by this. I don't know why they don't just shoot the bear. But anyway, they let him wrestle. The way she's kind of looking at him while he's wrestling the bear, kind of... Her eyes just say something like, oh, my God, how hot. Look at how hot he is. You almost wonder if she was staring at her, her boyfriend at the time, her husband, whoever she was with at the yeah. time. Or the bear. Winston Heinrich just put the camera on her and was like, all right, you're thinking about your husband, your boyfriend, or whoever, and go. 
action action angie and that was her reaction to the yeah joe don baker fight maybe she's there. looking at the bear not joe don it makes no sense because the bear is smaller than joe don baker okay yeah. so clearly it's a guy in a bear suit and it's a smaller i hate to say this but maybe a smaller philippine actor than joe don baker who's kind of a big dude or anyone next to joe don baker's gonna look small looks like he's about five two the guy in the bear suit it's ridiculous they he beats up the bear anyway <laughs> and so it's finally the night of the big gala at the guy's palace and the and the guy who plays I, I forgot his name but he's he's i've seen him like a spanish philippine actor i've seen him in other things and he looks like the perfect smarmy sort of rich asshole and then they all sort of kind of bond style go into this gala and they're all somehow wearing tuxedos you know what i mean yeah yeah and I must say that uh, Joe Don Baker's tuxedo did not fit very well. I don't know if they couldn't find like his size in the Philippines. I don't know why. Don't, yeah, why did he have his sleeves rolled up like around the elbow with the tuxedo on for some reason? <laughs> that was even before they did it in the eighties. I don't know what that was all about. <laughs> he did it before Don Johnson did it. Yeah. Did you notice this for some reason? Like he's always standing by the food. <laughs> what? He doesn't, you don't see him eating any food in this scene, but he's always standing like right next to the food table. And you're just like, huh. I wonder if he's like reaching over. Yeah, every time there's a table full of food in this movie, he's standing next to it for some reason. Yeah. So Angie Dickinson seduces him into giving her the codes to the security system. Joe Don Baker's jealous about that. And then uh, after the thing's over, they all break in in the middle of the night. And it just, it's a series, uh, we have to cut this one short, but it's a series of sort of a comedy of errors, all these things that go wrong. They're about to break in, no problems. They have the codes and everything. And so Mac Davis is in there uh, with uh, Jim Kelly, and they're about to break into the safe where all these things have been put overnight, you know, to protect them. And we find out that Yul Brenner's people have snuck in to bomb them. Like Yul Brenner's people found out that these guys are breaking. They're going to trip the bombs and the bombs are going to blow the safe. Yeah. Oh yeah. The, when I saw this movie again recently, I couldn't believe who played the henchman. It was, it's a baby William H. Macy from Fargo, Boogie Nights, Gus Van Zandt's remake of Psycho, you know, Mary Deb Felicity Huffman, list goes on. Great yeah. actor, great voice. I thought that was um, him. Yeah, I thought yeah. that was him. I mean, he looks like he's like 14 playing him, you know, in this part because it's 1979. But man, but he's playing, but he's really cold and he's scary. He actually scares me. Yeah, but they switch the bombs. So the, so then they're trying to escape. And then one of the, they shoot one of the henchmen. And one of the henchmen knocks over this brazier with all this, this, this flame and it sets the place on fire. Yeah. So this is a, a really good scene. And so it all goes to shit. And basically Jim Kelly and Mac Davis, and then Marjo's on the on the outside of the thing, and so he sort of like throws a grappling hook up. You know, they're able to escape, and then we get this wonderful. This is this is what makes the movie for me. Just this one scene, Yul Brenner. What happens then, Jordan? What happens to Yul Brenner's character? Um, Yul Brenner's on fire, and he's trying to defuse the bomb as he's on fire. <laughs> And this is amazing sequence because we have stuntman Glenn Wilder, who we mentioned on uh, one of the last podcasts on Point Break and Logan's Run, with a bald cap and stunt gel. And he is like literally on fire trying to defuse this bomb. And he's, as he's like, ah, you know, it's actually not Yul Brynner screaming in the scene. It's a really bad like library dub, um, which I wish they could have done different. Yeah, you seem from the back. It's not him, but just. Yeah. But pretty powerful stuff. Then he slowly just falls over after he slowly, after the fire succumbs him. Yeah, it's like he's, he's, he's it's crazy because he's on fire. But he's trying to defuse the bomb, like his own bomb. And then the fucking bomb explodes. He's holding on to the Cobra Jade. He's clutching it at the same time. Yeah. The, the fucked up part about it was this was Yul Brynner's idea to rewrite this scene. Yeah. The whole thing explodes. And everyone's outside the mansion. You just see the mansion explode or, or model the mansion. What did you think about that Philippine model of the mansion, Jordan? That model looked a little rushed. I mean, was that thing made out of paper, maybe? It looked like it was made out of paper mache. I hate to say it. Yeah. I mean, I believe it. it. literally like it was made out of paper and straws, and they were trying to create a colonial mansion. Sorry. Yeah, it looked like a house plant in front of that. I mean, it was believable <laughs> enough. They filmed it at night, so that was good, like in dark. But yeah, I mean, it's effective. It's effective enough for a cheap movie. 
Yeah, and luckily they just cut away to an explosion from the real mansion. So everyone's outside. Yul Brenner had the Cobra Jade. He exploded. And so there it goes. The Cobra Jade's destroyed. And then William Smith, for the second time in the in the movie, is pissed off. He's He's planned this whole thing. They've shot people. They beat people up. They did everything. Globe trotted around the world for this damn Cobra Jade. And then Marjo's like, I told you it was cursed. You know, Marjo says. And then Mac Davis is like, well, all this was for nothing. And then William Smith pulls out his cigar. And he's like, well, does anyone have a light? Then Jim Kelly's like, I do. You know, he moves his hand up to his cigar. And he opens his hand ever so slightly. And the Cobra Jade drops down. And he says, I wouldn't say it was for nothing. And that moment, I mean, the movie up to this is a little hit, hit or miss, but that ending got me. That little twist. This is a movie of twist, Jordan. I, I like that. What'd you think about? What'd you think about? I the, love uh, how uh, the Cobra Jade and he's like, I wouldn't. And, he, and just how he says, I wouldn't say it was for nothing. And then he whips out that Zippo lighter and lights uh, William Smith's cigar. I think that that's just awesome, right? It makes it for me. It makes the movie. I think it's awesome. And so, yeah, that's the movie. And okay, so things I liked about it. I like the action. I like this crazy motley crew of characters. It, none of this makes any damn sense. But I do love the Cobra Jade. I love the myth behind it. I love Yul Brenner's relationship to it. Uh, and I love that ending. What I don't love is Andy Dickinson and Joe Don Baker. I, I, I just, I can't get behind that. That whole love story kind of bothered you. I don't buy that love story. It's icky. It's gross. I wish she and William Smith would have hooked up. I don't know. They they almost, I, there was a love triangle between William Smith and Joe Don Baker and Angie Dickens' character. Kind of briefly hinted at in this movie. So yeah, kind it almost could have, he... you almost like thought it could have gone that way. Yeah, he backs off though. And then you get, you know, you get what you get. You get them for the rest of the movie. Yeah. But I don't know. I guess there is chemistry there, but I don't want there to be chemistry there. Does that make sense? Isn't it funny though? Yeah. Joe Don Baker should have chemistry with an all you can eat buffet line, not Angie oh. Dickinson. I don't want him to get barbecue sauce on Angie Dickinson. Come on, man. <laughs> but uh, it is funny how he quotes the Mac Davis song to Angie Dickinson in that one scene. He's just like, you know, baby, are you sure you want to get hooked on me? Sure you can afford to? Oh God, those. You didn't like that line? <laughs> anyway <laughs> no i didn't like any of their scenes anyway so uh the things that could be improved this plot is a mess um there's too many twists and turns i get it it works it's just not it could be a lot tighter it feels like there's like too many cooks in the kitchen really too many characters i would say uh, i like all these characters but there's too yeah. many there's, uh, there's kind of like people standing around with nothing to do sometimes you know Kind of like in the oceans. Movies. Well, you know, like like I said, Yul Brynner rewrote his own death scene. Mac Davis demanded all his scenes be in a hot tub, even though they weren't originally in the script. So there was yeah. a lot of rewrites going on in this movie with all the act. They were letting all the actors have their ways a lot on this movie. You know, uh, and I think that, even though Winston Heinrich was kind of a dictator, I think that Heinrich, yeah, maybe he was like that. But yeah, I think there were a lot of divas on set. You know, a lot of them got their own way in that. I think the movie compromised because of that. And there was just too many villains, Cameron uh, Mitchell and Yul Brenner. That's just that's just too much. I don't know. I wish it would have just been them playing cat and mouse with Yul Brenner the whole movie. But st instead, we get this uneven movie. But just a gem. I I'm glad you introduced me to this movie, Jordan. It, it was a lot of fun. I'm glad you liked it. I thought it's a it is a gem, right? I mean, come on. I, I just wish we could find a like an actual legit version of it where it wasn't pan and scan and it wasn't just the VHS. You know. Yeah, and and full disclosure, our copy was a bootleg. I think that I think it was Dutch subtitles. I don't know. So we're watching like Dutch subtitles or German. It wasn't German, but some subtitles the whole time. I don't know. Anyway, it was still dubbed in Filipino. A lot of it. That was weird. That was what was weird. But it was slightly letterbox. It was slightly in its original format. Anyway, great movie. Check it out. And Jordan, um, I give yes. this. I guess. Uh, I give this a solid six out of ten, six and a half out of ten for the action and and for all the just the great performances. What do you give it? I give this a for the spectacle of it and its time period. I'm gonna have to go above you here. Seven out of ten. I give it seven Ooh. out of ten. Diffusing bomb moments with Yul Burner on fire. 
Wow, look at that hot take! I oh I yeah I forgot I forgot to give my rating. Um, Joe Don Baker's in a hot tub with with a chicken leg, fried chicken <laughs> leg. Um, unnecessary. I love how he has that that chicken leg while they're in the hot tub right before they kiss and get it on. It it's kind of funny. Yeah. Anyway, um, okay. All right, everybody. That was our review we recorded earlier for. Um, uh, Night of the Cobra Jade. Uh, uh, interesting, fantastic movie. Yeah, before we start uh, drinking a bit. And I I want to take this opportunity to thank, again, Joseco Royale for bringing us all here and, and making yes. it possible for us all uh, to be here tonight. And Joseco Royale made it possible for us to bring in our special guest here, Jordan. Who do we have here to accept a, a Lifetime Achievement Award? The Robots Took My Podcast Lifetime Achievement Award, Jordan. Who do we have here on this stage? I am so excited about this. Percy Redblund, the freaking author uh, and screenwriter of Night of the Cobra freaking Jade. Percy Redblood Percy himself. Percy Redblood himself. Oh my God. Percy is live via satellite at his uh, at his home. In- yeah, live via satellite. <laughs> live via satellite. Live via Zoom, Jordan. Anyway, okay. <laughs> Percy Redblood in his house. Thank you, Mr. Redblood, for joining us. I, I haven't read a lot of your books, but I hear they're great. But we are a fan of your, your movies. Midnight in Algiers, The Athens Incident. Fox Trap, all the good ones. Um, uh, the Bucharest Connection. The uh, Bucharest Connection. Carlos the Jackal. Carlos the Lover. Carlos the Lover. All the movies in the Carlos series, I've only I've only seen one of them. But anyway, Mr. Redblund, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So tell us a little bit. Did you enjoy um, making Night of the Cobra Jade? Like, uh, Tell us about that experience. Were you there on set with them? Uh, or, or? Joel Brenner is an asshole. Let me say that. Oh, and, shoot. Yeah, I don't know. I, well, anything you remember positive about Night of the Cobra J, Mr. Redblund? Uh, William Smith rewrote my dialogue constantly, and Mac Davis always wanted to be in a fucking hot tub because uh, he always wanted his dick out, and it was no surprise Ryan Rick got him to do nudity. Uh, Wow. Um, um, okay. Well, yeah. So, so was the movie? Were you happy with the movie, Mr. Redblund? At least, uh, did it meet up to your your expectations based on the book? Uh, it made money overseas and it helped put my daughter in college. Other than that, it sucked as a movie, though. It was, no, it wasn't. It wasn't anything near my novel, and it didn't uh, change the ending for my novel. I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be something different, and they did it something wow, different. Wow. And, uh, well, um. So, uh, well, we present you with this award, uh, Mr. Redblund. We sent it to you, I think, a couple weeks ago. Jordan, did we get that out to him? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah there he is. He's uh, got it. Do you have he's it? Right? it. Oh, he's got it right there. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. This is a nice-looking award. Oh, is this chocolate? Do I need to put it in the fridge? Oh, wait, wait. Hold on. Is it going to melt? Yeah, no, no. Hold on. Hold on. That's prop chocolate. It's not food grade. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't eat it, uh, Mr. Redblund. It's not for human oh, consumption. You got, you got a, a prop chocolate statue? I thought you at least sent uh, him That's like, all we got, man. Look. Oh, I thought we could have sent him like a Suncoast kind of like Star Award thing or something. like, Or just gotten a trophy from the Dollar Tree even. Jeez. Okay. Or, or Jordan, from the we don't have a Patreon store. yet. Okay. Look, this is all out of pocket. So anyway, um, okay, yeah, sorry. Mr. Redblund, is there anyone else you want to thank? Uh, you know, anything, anything you want to say? Uh, yes. You know, yes. that now that you've received this wonderful Lifetime Achievement Award from our uh, podcast. Yeah. Is there is there anyone you'd like to thank, Mr. Redblund? Like, you know, any, any, any thoughts? Any, any? Yes. Robert Evans. I did punch-ups on Sliver. You never paid me, you fucker. Oh, damn. Robert Evans is dead, right? I mean, yeah. he died like time anyway. Robert Culp also. What about Robert Culp? Did he? Fuck him. Hollywood is oh, run by damn Roberts. Oh, uh, great. Well, uh, Mr. Redblood. Dick Van Dyke, I saved your career, you diva fuck. Fuck you for changing my dialogue. Damn, is there anyone you'd like to think? Oh, yeah. is there anyone? I mean, is there anything positive you have to say, Mr. Redblund? Uh Surely hey. somebody had a good impact on you, a positive impact on you. I don't know. Well, sure. Ava Gardner and Shelly Winters for that one night. All right. Uh, anyway, um, I oh. don't... Okay. No, thank All you, right. Mr. Redblund. Uh, thank you for coming. 
so yes. much. Thank, wow. thank you for joining us. Thank you, Mr. Uh, enjoy, Redblund. Yes. Enjoy your reward. We loved your movie and um, all of thank your movies. You guys, uh, where am I? Who, what was this again? It, it was the robots took my podcast. That was we were giving you an award. Oh, that's right. Thank you. How do I turn this off? I don't know how this works. How do I get out of here? So anyway, uh, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that. How do you turn this off? Like, all right, thank you, Mr. Br- thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Redblood. How do you turn I this off? Somebody help Wait, Jordan. I, somebody somebody work? help him. I, um, you just you gotta turn the button on the right there, the one that says uh, "Leave Studio." A- anyway, on, it's on the screen, we'll, Mr. We'll, Redblood. Yeah, we'll we'll, we'll, we'll be right back, everybody. I don't. Where's my granddaughter? I'll get her to help me. I need to turn this off, baby. We'll be right back after this break. Hello. The robots took my podcast 50th anniversary. The robots took my podcast 50th anniversary. We've got action and adventure. We've got drama and suspense. We've got the robots took my podcast 50th. All right, everyone, we're back. And uh, Jordan, wait, Jordan, we're, we're, we're back. Just one drink is not... That's, Jordan's on the phone here, everybody. One drink did not send me over the loop right now, okay? Okay? I don't... Where are you right now? I'm at the 50th episode, Gala. Remember? I told you that. What? You didn't do that for our anniversary. Okay. I'll talk to you when you get home. Love you, too. Bye. Jesus Christ. I'm sorry. Talking to my lovely wife, everyone. Okay. Um, and... Jordan, now, now for the the most important part of the evening, I think, Jordan, um, I want you to know that we actually got everyone here together because we're worried about you. Be- because of all that money I owe to the IRS. Oh uh, you, no, you guys. no, no, not that. Oh, my gambling debts. Are you going? You going to help me out? I'm look. I've been spending too much time up in Cripple Creek. I'll admit it. Okay. Are you going to help me? pay them off is is that what you say no no jordan no um jordan it's about your drug use we all know you've been using crystal dream i'm not using crystal dream and i don't know how you've been getting this crystal dream a fake drug a fictional drug from harley davidson and the marlboro man i don't know how how this has happened but it's you you have a serious problem jordan what what I'm not using Crystal Dream, and I don't know. I don't know what you're talking Jordan, about, Jordan. You've watched Logan's Run four times in the past 24 hours, and I have it on good authority that you're even misting another fake drug from Prayer of the Roller Boys. How obscure is your fake drug habit here, Jordan? I'm not misting. How are you getting this stuff? You, but but you all are drinking too right now <laughs> jordan, jordan look look you leave mexico's best champagne out of this this isn't about the smooth effervescence of joseco royale it's about it's, it's about your drug use okay you don't take this out on the champagne are you are you trying to julian me here jordan jordan this isn't less than zero i want oh, my, my money, money julian wait wait how did J- james spader's here you owe me five hundred thousand, julian why does he keep calling me julian anthony you owe me 500k, Jordan. Oh, I'm taking you to the back room of a Christmas party. I'm going to introduce you to some important people. They're cool. You'll like them, Jordan. A- Anthony, uh, Anthony, you think <laughs> okay, you, I'll, you, you I'll, talk to James Spader from Lesson Zero I'll, for me? I'll, I'll get you right out of this after this next commercial. And now a word from our sponsor, our last sponsor of the evening... Hi, I'm Slater. You might remember me from Land of Doom and Slater's Land of Mattresses. But I have a new venture. Slater's Land of Barbecue. Take a right off Central and Tidwell, right next to Slater's Land of Mattresses. Come for the barbecue, stay for the mattresses. We have our... Slater, you wouldn't need your mattresses if your barbecue was any good. Or vice versa. Anderson, what the hell are you doing in here? Just letting the people know that your barbecue is made of people. Well, uh, those, Anderson, those are baseless accusations. And and that's where you're wrong, Anderson. You're, the problem with your barbecue is, Anderson, you're living in the past. People don't want your marinated meats. No, 
just salt and pepper and strong smoke flavor and mostly real butter. Then is that why the lines are around the block at Anderson's Barbecue? By the way, take a left central and Ted will. No, you don't, Anderson. Why did you open up a barbecue joint right across the street from mine? That's dirty, Anderson. You're a real asshole. You wouldn't be so tough without your coupons, Slater. No. You leave my coupons out of this. The only way is to win. Only the strong survive, Anderson. That's why I'm a winner. You're a loser. You're losing at the barbecue game, Slater. That's where you're wrong, Anderson. The same people who created your barbecue... Damn it, Anderson! Look, I only have this recording booth for an hour. You ruined my goddamn commercial. You're not so tough without your recording studio, are you? Son of a bitch, Anderson. Seize him! God. Slater's Land of Match... I mean, Slater's Land of Barbecue. Central Tidwell. Damn it. All right, everyone. We're back from... Thank you to Slater's Land of uh, Mattresses and Barbecue. Yeah, Slater. What great barbecue, by the way. I mean, yeah, longtime sponsor, uh, Slater. Thank you for providing the barbecue all the way from the apocalypse. Um, and we're back, everyone, with our 50th episode celebration and now Jordan intervention. What? And we have a special celebrity guest here, Jordan, who is going to speak to you via astral chat. Who? What? What? Who? What? What? Hey, buddy. Hey, it's Doug McClure again. It's, it's me, Dougie, again. Doug McClure? Or- uh, Jordan, we're all just worried about you, buddy. Uh, you can get a swap. Are, are you drunk in the afterlife? Are you drunk? No, no, there's, there's, no, there's no alcohol in the afterlife. You sound drunk. I, I, I mean, there's not an open bar like like here, but, uh, you know, uh, there is a bar. Uh, but what's it's what's the bar open. called? Oh, uh, Rafferty's. Rafferty's, you know that one? Rafferty's like in the heavenly kid. So there is no celebration. This was just a ploy to get me here, Anthony. Doug McClure and no, what no, the, no, no. to get me to rehab to get me here. Uh, was was it very different than when, when I went to rehab, Jordan? I mean, you, you never went to rehab. Shut up. You never went to rehab, Doug McClure. Well, I, I, I did go to rehab from a certain point of view. Ah, come on, Doug. Don't Obi Wan me here. Certain point of view, my ass. Intervention, my right, ass. Look, look, I, I, I've, I've got to go. Can someone give me a ride? Uh, I've, can someone give me a ride? Oh, 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 fuck all of you. God. Oh. Jordan, Jordan, don't leave. Look, I tell you what. Uh, next episode, we can do whatever movie you want, okay? Can we finally review Footloose? Uh, well, I mean, let's not get crazy here. Footloose. I mean, everyone's seen Footloose. but Okay, okay, Jordan, how about this? D- don't do it for me. Don't do it for yourself. Do it for the kids, okay? And you know what? This could be uh, uh, a very special episode here. Kids don't do, don't do fictional movie drugs. Stay away. Stay. stay, 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 stay. Ah, I'm off to rehab. See ya. Uh, Jordan, hold on. There's a guy from the hotel coming up on the stage. Of excuse me, your time is over, and we have a wedding here in this room later, and um. Yeah? Who, who's going to, you know, I have this this bill. Uh, somebody, uh, someone going to pay this? Uh, Jordan. Um, I think, yeah, Jordan, Jordan. I'm off. Off to rehab. See ya. I, I think Jordan. Jordan's the guy with the credit card here. He's got this uh, visa. No, I'm off to rehab. I'll see, I, I'll, I'll see ya. Bye. See ya. Sorry. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I guess we'll sort this out. Everyone, uh, thank you all for listening. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you. Thank you all for listening. Thank you all for coming and drinking and eating on our tab. We hope you've all enjoyed it. Thank you to our our sponsors, Joseco Royale, Astral Chat, and Slater's Land of Mattresses and Barbecue. And we appreciate every single one of you who's listened, all of you that were here tonight. Thank you. We hope you've had a little bit of fun here tonight. Um, listen to some of our other episodes. Uh, thank you all to our celebrity guests as well. If you like this, tell your friends, tell your coworkers, tell random strangers on the street. And I've got to go find Jordan and get that credit card. I don't know how we're going to pay for this. So maybe we'll have another episode after this. I don't know. But uh, Jordan, can you still hear me? <laughs> Are you still here? Oh, I was about to go to rehab. Jordan? 
Before you leave, tell everybody, this has been... The robots took my podcast and my sobriety. All trailers, clips, music, or any other copyrighted material are used sparingly, edited from their original forms, and used for the purposes of criticism, discussion, commentary, and education about these fine films.